All right, here we go. This is the uh, end of the world. We've been talking about doing this one for a while, so let's uh, let's get into it. This is uh, I'm not going to really go over what uh, scenario this is. We'll find out as we uh, as we go along here. So, just a few things before we get started, because want to sort of go over if somebody else is going to play one of these games. Some some of the things you might think about. Uh, so this is about the end of the world. So it's not going to be pleasant. It's uh, it's good. We're, we'll we'll make it our own and have fun with it. But there all will be some dark situations and some gruesome things happen, um, because that's how you ramp up the uh, intensity, right? So this is a game that has a lot of that in there. But uh, there will probably be a character death or or four um, <laughs> in this. <laughs> Bill already printed me a second character sheet. So, <laughs> so you are place playing your yourself. bets on who's going to die first. <laughs> But it, this ha- this can happen pretty easy because of die rolls, situations, the way the dice pool c- gets put together. So there'll there'll be situations with you guys trying to manage your stress and your traumas and your resistances to be able to stay alive as as long as you can, essentially. So um, if you die, we'll we'll figure out what we're going to do at, at that point. But you are playing yourself, so it's hard to replace yourself unless we have a clone option. But uh, we'll work on that. Revenant. <laughs> Revenant. There you go. I like that. <laughs> so, so I also, leaving. through past experience with this game, we will be not bringing any family members, friends, or children death. Or uh, dogs. Or, oh, I can't do animals? Okay, no dogs. No not dogs. We'll, not we'll, their we'll dogs. The yeah, no Fitz and Frankie. <laughs> our dogs are our okay. children. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like I said, you are playing yourself, so... You know, you're not uh, heroes like in a fantasy realm, but since we're making a podcast here, we'll take some pretty, uh, uh, pretty high tolerance on on what you would be normally do. So if you want to sort of extend a little bit more beyond what you think you might want to do for fun, uh, that's okay with me. Uh, I'll reel you back in if it gets too crazy. Like if Bill jumps off a five story building uh, and lands on his feet. I might, I might just go ahead and kill him off just for fun. <laughs> I have gone skydiving before. Well, there you go. That would give you an extra die. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but you get an extra die for falling. You get a positive die for falling. You're great at falling. But it's <laughs> it's the landing. That I is. am so good at falling. <laughs> Andy's got size 13s. I mean, come on. Extra yeah, die for the feet. They're basically parachutes. <laughs> or weights. <laughs> Lead weights. <laughs> So there's a lot of little rules and stuff that instead of just going and talking through all that right now, we'll sort of hit it as we go and uh, and discuss the different things as, as they come up. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're all together here in Columbus, Ohio. Finally, we've got to go to Origins. The COVID situation is under control. People are back to somewhat of a normal existence and uh, Origins is, is on schedule, and we all get together, uh, flying in from different parts of the country. Um, we have Emma has joined us, and she's, uh, she's here, and the, the five of us, and we're all staying at the Hampton Inn, which is right across the street, uh, conveniently located right across the street from the convention center. Uh, so as... The first day goes on without much of a hitch, but but we've all heard rumors as uh, on you know different news media on our phones as we were getting together to come to Origins about uh, astronomers. They've been talking about uh, potential uh, meteor showers coming in the near future and how uh, this would be a, a great sight to see. There's some you know are, are going to be as amazing uh, flames in the sky and. And then others, of course, are saying this is a very dangerous situation and and it could cause a catastrophic damage. And, and you're seeing all kinds of different uh, radical things on the news from uh, people saying, you know, God's coming down to, to take us all back to, hey, this is going to be a really cool thing to get a, a, a good telescope to see. So it's in our periphery, but it's something that everybody's sort of talking about. And uh, so the first day goes off without much of a hitch. We play a lot of games. Uh, we, you know, go out to eat restaurants, having a good time, meeting up with a lot of friends. We get Bonacord. 
Uh, we we do see Stephen Bonacore. I was going to leave specific names out because I didn't want to kill anybody off. You already said <laughs> Emma, though, so it's like but, she's doomed. Yeah, but <laughs> good one. We're gonna leave loved there, ones there out is of a it. Re- there is a reason I have Emma in there. So so anyway, uh, yeah, we there is may Emma be some. Is Emma on the Zoom uh, call? What's happening? <laughs> no, but that's a great idea. I should have did that. So it, it's Friday, Friday afternoon. We're all. Um, in one of the smaller rooms off in the convention center, and we're having a live D&D session with one of our patrons. And it's, it's really going well. We have, we're having a great time. And uh, the session ends, and Emily wants to go down to the convention hall to pick up a game that she saw earlier, and you guys are, are going to head out. Emma had to go to a meeting for one of the things on, on her podcast, And I am taking some of the uh, stuff that we use for playing the game back to the hotel, which is right across the street, and plugging my phone in, and I'm going to catch up with you guys later. So um, that's what happens. I I leave, and you guys go down into the convention hall. And it's like the convention hall is every year with Origins. There's just a ton of people. You're sort of fighting your way through the crowds, and it's, it's, it's really busy. While you are there, you start to see people gathering around in little groups and talking. Uh, and you're sort of curious as to what's going on. And you, and you see people gathering around their phones and they're talking about meteor strikes out into the ocean. And, and there's videos of people that are on like container ships and they see these massive waves and, and, and just going over the tops of the ships. and, and Obviously, these meteors are much bigger than the meteorites, I should say, are much bigger than where we're expected. Um, and people are talking about, you know, what what's going on and and c- concerned. But once again, that seems far away. It's not. It doesn't even seem really real uh, at this point. But then you continue on to go to find the game, and a little while later, suddenly you hear this terrifying noise it's, it's, it's almost like the, the ground shakes from underneath of you the lights flicker everything just is everybody starts screaming and the lights go out you hear a lot of rumbling people talking it starts to quiet down almost to an eerie silence because everybody's waiting to see what happened or it, they're in the dark then the backup lights sort of come on around the convention hall And it's very dark, quiet. People start to move around again, wondering what happened. Some people go over to the doors and and open up to look outside. And another large crash comes through and dust and dirt flow inside from the open doors, knocking people down, shelves falling over on top of each other. the crowd screams, everybody starts running around. You're mostly in the dark. What do you do? Hold hands. Everyone grab my hand. <laughs> Where are you? What the heck just happened? Are we okay? Are, are, are you three okay? I'm okay. Elena? So. Are you all, is everyone all right? Are, are you hurt? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Um, crap. It's crowded just regularly in the, in the convention hall, but now you, you feel people getting up off the floor. They're grabbing around. People are grabbing onto you and pulling themselves up, and now you start to hear the moans and the cries of people who have had uh, shelves fall over on top of them and, and people that are, are, are hurt. Um, you, you don't know which, you know, that's coming from all different directions, and people are starting to get scared and, and starting to head towards the door and, and mass. I'm, I'd like to feel around in my pockets, see if I can feel if my cell phone's in there, and if it is, um, I'd like to pull it out and turn on the flashlight. So okay. Get a better view of what's going on around us. Yeah, is that it, helps. Is it you completely see dark? Doing the same. No, there's still the, the big, um, like backup lights, the halogen lights that are up on the and and they're on, but it's it's it highlights areas, right? So there's still a lot of dark areas, and plus with everything sort of falling over and chaos, it's very hard to to walk around. So, like 
like Bill said, you know, you see lights coming on from phones and everybody's sort of got the same idea to try to find their way out. So can can you describe like did the dirt and dust and stuff come from outside? So yes. so the building is stable, it's not collapsing right now. If I were to look um at. from from where from what you can see from your vantage point, uh every you know, the door there's there's like a set of doors um probably 10 doors in each entrance and exit or I guess something like that I can't remember Mm -hmm. Um, but when when people started rushing towards the door to go outside and they opened that up they were blown back by whatever dust and debris that came in so it doesn't make sense to go to the doors guys (laughs) Uh, but that but that's not still continue I mean it's just dusty and and uh, there was it was like there was a large explosion of some kind and you're seeing uh, uh, when they opened the doors up it this when all that stuff entered the room and I'll pull my phone out. And- yeah, yeah, I like the flashlight. The flashlight's a good idea. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I guess, go to the, like, the first person I see if, if someone's crushed by a shelf or something to try to get pick up shelves off of people and uh, help whoever's immediately around. So, yeah, so there are people right, right around your area that are trying to help move stuff around. There's boxes everywhere. And, you know, you see some people that with, looks like minor injuries, that, you know, the... When a shelf would fall on you, you might be scraped sure, up sure. a little bit, and they're trying to help each other up. Um, but nobody really knows what to do. Okay, then I look, uh, I scroll through my phone, and I look at my uh, to-buy list for Origins, and I just run around sprint looking for all the games <laughs> that I was planning to buy anyway. That sounds about scooping right. Scooping up for free now. <laughs> so, so uh, oddly enough, there is a fire sale. <laughs> 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 I want to I wanna see if I can connect to 911. So you, you dial in, of course, and what it's odd, but a lot of the, uh, you used to have a pretty good signal, um, you know, near near the sides of the, of the, cam, of the uh, convention hall, but, you know, it's spotty sometimes, but, but you can see that it's, it's, it's flickering on and off. Um, you can connect in, you can, you can get some things, but it, it disconnects all the time. Your signal is, is, is not good. Okay. What what are you what are you looking for? I mean, you trying to log on to trying to call nine one one. I was trying to call nine one one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you can dial nine one one, and it it doesn't seem there's no response yet, but you can you can continue to try. Okay. Do you think that is it possible that a, a meteorite did this? I guess they've been falling all over the bloody or place. Or nuclear attack? Yeah, nuclear anti-board attack. game terrorists. I don't know. Goodness, Bill, stop standing around. Help these people. Well, what should I try to put them out of their misery? Like this, this guy over here's got a pretty bad scratch. I mean, if they're beyond hope, go for it. You would know. <laughs> is there I'm anybody else hold around? Of is there anybody else like maybe taking charge? Like, does anyone else seem to be maybe just kind of very frenetic? Not really. I mean, some of the people that were that looked at the badges on the door seem to have some kind of authority over the area, but you know they are just as, as uh, scared and, and not knowing what's going on as everybody else. So they are going to the doors and, and sort of opening up and looking out. But they're that's further away from you guys. Uh, if you want to go check that out, you're you're more than welcome to work your way over there. But okay. nobody's shouting out. Everybody come here. Everybody go there. Should we? Go find a window to look out? Yeah, maybe. I will. If there's anyone who, like, who, uh, like Leland said, if I can actually help someone get out from underneath the shelf or whatever, I will do that. And if not, if everyone just has minor injuries, then... that will kill them. I'll go try and look for... Yeah. Okay, so this is a good opportunity since we're starting out to, to talk about a check. So um, there is somebody that is trapped under one of these large shelves that has uh, fallen over that's filled with with different games and there are a few people that are trying to pick this up and uh so we'll do a, a quick skills check a task to uh walk through how that works you guys want to what tell me how you want to accomplish this it's, it's basically just a big shelf that's that's laying that was filled with games it's one of those like a big calyx type shelf but larger and it's on top of this uh this older bald uh Heavy weight, a heavy uh, guy like me, <laughs> sort of sitting there. He can't move very much. He's, he's sort a of a fine struggling. specimen, is what you're saying. That's right, right, exactly. What part of this guy's body is sticking out? Hands, feet? It's from the waist up. Okay. His, his legs are trapped underneath. Okay. Okay. 
I, I think what I would try to do first is just, well, obviously ask for help from any able-bodied people around and then just see if we can lift it. And if it seems really, really heavy, then I'll kind of cross that bridge. I, I say, I say team lift and someone pulls him out. Yeah. I don't have to lift it all I'll help. Way. I'll check on him, make sure he's doing okay and try and help pull him out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a, a test here, and we're, this will be physical, of course. So we're going to use one of the three traits that are on the top. There's physical, mental, and social, and we're going to be doing physical. And since this is a physical test that if you see down on the character sheet, there's a little sword and there's a little shield, one being sort of offensive and defensive. In this case, uh, we're going to be using the dexterity side, which is the, the shield side. And we're going to create a dice pool to see if you guys can lift this shelf. So we're going to create a dice pool. So everybody gets, when you're going to do any task, is you get one positive die. So go ahead and put that in your dice pool. This is everybody that's going to list, uh, going to help lift this up. And then we're going to add in any, pos any additional positive or negative dice based on the situation. So... I'm going to add one negative die to this dice pool because you are in a room just full of chaos, right? There's, there's boxes of games around. It's going to be hard to get footing and hard to grasp onto this. It's also dark, and uh, there's a lot going on. So we're going to add one negative die there. Now we'll, what we can do at that point is you guys can look at your features that you have, if you have any positive features on your character sheet that might aid you um, and allow you to get another die. So... Um, we'll start with Leland. Do you have anything that on your character sheet that would? Uh, my my plus in, under physical is I'm big enough. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sizable man. <laughs> I think uh, I I am I've trained for this. I'm built for this, John. Okay, so add, add another <laughs> positive die there to your pool. All right. And um, you know I don't know if there's anything we can do for multiple so i'm just going to go ahead and say that leland's going to pick it up and then you two are going to assist okay um, elena and bill right and uh, emily you were going to help I'm pull the guy out keep him calm and okay. and try and help him when he when it's time to get out from under the shelf yeah yeah i'll be saying reassuring things to him as well you know like you might be able to get keep you out of here legs. don't worry about it <laughs> i i've got a lot of experience in amputating lower limbs this exactly will, this will be quick and relatively painless. I'm sure your back's not broken. You're not going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life. He's Don't good worry. with the saw. I will I will reassure him, uh, depending on how heavy the shelf is, will depend on my rep range, so it may take me one to three or three to five lifts <laughs> before he can actually get out <laughs> until my set's over, but other than that, he's going to be okay. <laughs> he doesn't seem reassured at all. <laughs> but he doesn't have a lot of options. He's weeping right now. <laughs> Terrified. Well, I do have a negative under social. I undervalue myself. So maybe I'm not selling it well enough for him. I don't know. <laughs> so it, it is a big, heavy shelf, and a lot of things are still on that shelf. So I'm going to give you one additional negative die, but two additional positive die for the help that Bill and Elaine are giving you. So you should have a dice pool right. of four white die and two black die. Okay. Okay, I have rolled. Okay, so so now I'm 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 want to get equal to or under my dexterity score. With right? your positive die, you need to be equal to or under. And what is your dexterity score? My dexterity is a three. I do have uh, two positives under three and under. I have a three and a one. Okay. Now look at your your negative die, your black die. The, the number, uh, the pips on those die. Do any of those match the pips on your positive die? Yeah, I have a, a six positive and a six bad. So they, they negate each other. So you okay. take those two out of the pool. All right. Those are the only ones. That's the only one. And then you said how many how many successes did you have? It uh, looks like two successes. I got a, a three and a one. Okay. So you have one black die, that is, one negative die, and two successes. So you do lift the shelf up. But as you're lifting it up, it is very heavy, and you sort of pull a little bit of a muscle um, in your back as you do it, which you, which that black die represents one point of stress, physical stress that you're going to take. Okay. So on your character sheet, you can see there is a, there's a place called stress and resistance, and there is a level one, two, and three. You're going to start with level one and fill in the first of the three boxes that are listed on that, uh, that row. That means you've taken one point of physical stress. Okay. 
we'll talk about when you uh, when we get to the next stress level when we get when we get to that and talk about resistance. Okay, so you guys are successful. You help this guy out. He you you pull him out. He's very happy and and thanks you very much for uh, for what it is. But he's still not not doing very well. And as you're looking around the room, you see that other people are doing the same. Everybody's being very helpful, the best that they can be. But the doors are opening up. People are starting to to try to filter out. And as they open the door, there's a smoke smoke and and dust coming into the room. People are coughing and hacking. Uh, it, it looks like if the convention hall has the hall, uh, the actual hallway, and then there's like a, a big hall between the glass from the outside of the building that looks like the glass has all been blown out. So the outside of the building is now exposed out to the, to the road. Dang. I would like to put on my mask. I have a mask that was in my purse. So with okay. the dust and smoke, I want to just protect myself and put my mask on oh that's good thinking I'll pull my t-shirt up over my nose so as you might guess now that it's been a few minutes it's been about 10 minutes since this this explosion has happened people are starting to to talk a little bit more the the uh, starting to filter out of the hall what you know asking each other what happened what what could possibly done that people saying hey it's we obviously got hit by a meteorite um you know we need to get out of here and the the people are using their phones like you said before and starting to read some of them have connections they're tar- starting to read things and they they say everybody look at your phone and if you look down you you see that there has been uh you ever see ever had like an amber alert um something that pops up that's, that says something well Obviously, somehow, the government or whoever has access to everybody's phone, and there's a national alert that pops up for everybody. I'll just kind of show mine to Bill. Can you, I guess I'll show mine to Emily. Can you translate this as an American? I can't read this. (laughs) (laughs) There's no U's in these words. This isn't the royal English. <laughs> the emergency alerts that come to our phone are in English and French. <laughs> in well, this is just in English because it's in Ohio. But it's in, it's yeah. in Ohio English. It's in Ohio English. That's right. It's, it's in America. Done. Get yourselves to cover. Says, y'all, y'all gotta listen up. <laughs> There's been confirmed uh, that several meteorites have impacted the U.S in some cases causing severe damage in the surrounding areas. Please, everyone stay calm. Uh, emergency personnel are being dispatched into the air, into those areas. Um, please try to stay off the road so the National Guard and those emergency vehicles can reach their destinations. Guys, let's go to our cars. Holy crap, the National Guard. That sounds serious. All right, we'll be fine then. Let's just find somewhere to hold up. Should we go back to our hotel room? It's right across the street, right? And I think that's where John went, and Emma should meet us there too, right? Yeah. I mean, she and I already ha- have an emergency plan in case of meteorite. We already have a meeting spot. We set it everywhere we go. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's, I guess it pays to be prepared. You guys are know, so you? cute. <laughs> I, uh, I would like to, to see what's going on outside. Okay. I mean, are there are there any windows uh, nearby where we can get a well, look out? Or... Right? Yeah. So in, in the, when you're in the actual hall, I don't know if you guys remember right. The, yeah. There's you're there's, in a big room. There's not a lot of doors. Windows. There's yeah. no windows. Um, you go out of those doors, and then there's surrounding, uh, like a second level that right. before you go out to the. I mean, we could go get all our board games. We don't want those to be missing. Look. Let's head back to the hotel room and, and regroup, and hopefully the others will meet us there. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's starting to get a little, you know, people are starting to realize what have happened, has happened, and there's, you know, you're starting to hear people, you know, get a little bit more agitated, and, and well, I'll be damned if I'm going to stay here. Let's right. go. And they're, they're starting to head towards the... Uh, um, the car parks and you know people are, are getting a little bit more agitated uh, as time goes on um, do we see like one of the restaurants or like food carts or anything like that like so there's no food carts but there are restaurants all around um, 
they're out they're out across the street are people over by your hotel do they look like they're being work like operated right now so so you go out of the convention hall right and you see that obviously something has just came through this this uh, shock wave um, has come through and just knocked out a crap load of the uh, windows that are facing the northwest from uh, Columbus. And it, it looks like, you know, the buildings are still intact, but anything that was, you know, loose, any kind of thing that was laying around on the street has all been blown up against the side of the buildings. Um, you can see some some cracks in, in some of the sides of the buildings. Some cars and bikes and stuff have been blown over. Um, and you see a lot of people on the street that are sort of walking around trying to help each other um, and, you know, traffic starting to get a little bit uh, heavier as people jump into their cars that are on the street and, and try to make their way out of the city. So we can't see the impact point then just from outside no. of the hall. Okay. But we could maybe surmise the direction in which it hit? Yeah. If you look, if you look up to the northwest, um, the direction in which... The, apparently the blast came from you can see uh, a massive darkness uh like cloud like a big black cloud that uh, it doesn't look like like a mushroom cloud or anything it just looks like a a big dark cloud of maybe the like ash or soot or something ash yeah exactly yeah. which side of the hotel is our room on is is it northwest facing or uh, yours would be on the south side. Okay. We did not pay extra for a meteorite-facing room. No. That's right. Definitely not. Okay. I told I mean, you guys. I just... <laughs> I told asking, you it was a scam. I guess I was wrong. Just, we've just paid up a couple more dollars. <laughs> I'm asking about the restaurants because, like, we're going to get hungry and so are other people. And, like, I don't know if people are just running. We should just grab food. Look, the National Guard is going to be here soon. I don't... We have People snacks in the room. How many snacks do you have in your room? Because we don't have anything but a bag of peanuts. I brought a box of granola bars. The National Guard's going to be here soon. We're not, it's not going to not going to be here for two months. Everything's going to be fine. Let's go. I, let's go back to the hotel. Bill can carry a lot in a backpack. I always make him do it. It's what. So he you want to go looting? It's been fifteen minutes. <laughs> that, yeah, that I mean, does... this is me in real life, guys. Duh. It does seem a bit. <laughs> drastic of a thing to do like okay, what fine let's just see how things go uh, our hotel room should be on the side of the hotel that is safe and wasn't damaged so we should be we should be safe to go and just hang out in there and watch the news see what's going on we're just gonna go hang out and watch the news okay. and be safe yeah and wait for our friends and spouse well yeah mine's right here mine's not <laughs> lucky you <laughs> His partner isn't. Uh, fine, just go. The Hampton Inn is is where we're staying, and it's it's a brick building. It's five stories tall. I mean, if you guys want to Google Map uh, Columbus, Ohio, you can see exactly where I'm talking about. It's sort of got a, this sort of turret rounded front to it, um, where you go in the, the main entryway, and it's a, it's a pretty large brick building. Um, has some stairs, spiral, like a staircase that goes up um, in the first floor, and then there's, of course, elevators. Uh, you see um, people going in and out uh, of the hotel. A lot of people, you know, carrying their bags and everything seem to be going back to the hotel, which is, you know, the sort of the safe haven, I guess you could say, because you don't want to be in the, uh, in the convention hall when it's dark. How much alcohol do we have in the room? Are the lights on? Uh, the, the proper amount of alcohol that we would have in a room. Okay. Look, Elena. So five bottles. I get that this is stressful, but we should probably keep our wits about us for at least let's let's wait let's wait an hour maybe We're see what develops on the news and then sit we sit around and wait. We did enough John of that during Emma COVID. Have, I'm sick of it. I know, but maybe John and Emma will have come back by then. And we can at least all group up and see what's going on. Go from there. So as you're walking across the road back to the hotel, which is re really close by, you, you can almost you can see it from where you're going. You uh, you do hear sirens now starting to the noise. You see some police officers that are going over to help people that are laying on the sidewalk that have obviously be injured from glass and, and debris. Um, and there seems to be you know they're trying to take some kind of control of the situation, but you get the feeling as people are you know starting to realize that you know this has happened and it could happen again 
um, people are getting nervous and they're and they're wanting to you know get out. So tensions are starting to get a little bit a little bit higher. Yeah, I I feel like this is kind of turning into a timber box here. Let's let's just get to a safe place in our hotel and just hunker down for a little bit until this chaos sort of dissipates a bit. Sounds like a good plan. I agree. You don't have any problem getting back to your uh, room. Now, in in your hotel, the, the electricity's still on, and it looks like, um, you know, it's it's late afternoon, and it looks like the traffic lights are were off, but now things are starting to, to be put back in order a little bit. And you get back to the room, and uh, you notice that the bags and things that I had brought back to the room are there, and my phone is being charged, but I am I'm not in the room um, for whatever reason. So, of course, turn on the TV, you, you hear in the news that, of course, there's been multiple impacts throughout the country, uh, dozens actually, and you're seeing, uh, as you're watching the news, you're seeing, uh, of course, amateur photography, of course, of, of people like uh, showing these massive mounds, they look like, like almost uh, large mud-covered mounds that have smashed into the earth. Uh, like a farm area and everything's just been devastated around it um, and you you see more videos sort of what you saw on, on your phones earlier where these things were hitting in the water but but you see this created uh, massive waves and have one up and, and washed things out on the shoreline uh, ships are turned over uh, you know fires burning people screaming and running around this is all over the news and they're just showing this not just in the United States this is this is all throughout the world and uh, it's, you know, reporters are out there giving you the, the breakdown of what's going on, and it looks a lot worse than what you first imagined it would be. I'm Holy going crap. to walk over and grab John's phone and sigh. He never carries his phone. He never has it on him when I need him to have it on him. And it starts beeping because Discord's on, and it just <laughs> continually beeps. Beeps, beeps, <laughs> and you know there's a problem because it's not on uh, Do Not Disturb. And you hear the sound of potions exploding? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will attempt to turn it off. I don't know if I can turn it off without, because it's the face recognition thing. So can I turn your phone off without your face? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn your phone off, but stick it in my pocket so I have it so that when I, can see, when I see you again, I'm going to... Smack it into you and say, carry your damn phone. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do a roll on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So as you're, you know, you're, you're taking this in, you're looking out the window, you're seeing that now that there, the traffic out on the road is getting heavier and heavier and people are starting to sort of hit their cars, the bumpers together because they're trying to push people on through. They're, they're really wanting to get out of, of the area. It's turning into to, to night, and uh, the restaurants are trying to close. People are trying to push people out of the restaurants. You know, the workers are leaving. They're wanting to go home to their families, and uh, tensions are getting high. People are starting to push each other around a little bit on the streets, and, you know, the police are, are trying to intervene best as possible, but there's just not enough uh, officers to be able to, to take care of, of the, the tension that's growing in, in the air. Oh, I'm glad we got out of there. What a friggin' mess this is. These people are losing it. Look at the yeah, poor police there. officers down there trying to get them in line. I th I'd say we just hang out here for a little while longer. I don't I don't want to go down there and be part of that. How long's it been? When can I have a drink? It's been about uh, probably about four or five hours since the impact. Where's John? Where's Emma? Where are Where they? The can I have whiskey now? Hey. You can have whatever you want. So are, are still our phones like the service still spotty? It's it is actually it it seems like uh, it was it was before it was going you know like one bar two bar kind of things and sort of fluctuating a little bit here and there. Now it seems to be pretty much consistently on one bar. Oh, huh. Leland, have you tried calling Emma? Of course, I've been doing that the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I'm Wait a second. You. Can we do a, some kind of deception room? <laughs> and you can't get through, Social I guess. Social empathy. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, 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 I guess I, I mean, I would have been trying to call her and stuff. Um, especially if we've been in the hotel for like four hours, right? Yeah, I was right. thinking about trying to contact family, see if they're all right, let them know I'm all right. So um, you're, you're trying, and it seems like um, you, you just can't seem to get through to anything. 911, of course, is, is, is locked up. And if you, you dial the phone, it starts to ring, and then nothing, it's dead. It's, too, it's fluctuating too much to actually make a full connection. Okay. So some time passes, turns into night. You hear more sirens. You hear, you know, more things going on, more yelling in the streets, some uh, fights breaking out, people busting windows and, and, and going in and, and grabbing things. So the North Market, which is a, a, a place sort of like a big, I don't know, what would you call it, a, a food, uh, what do you call it, Emily? Market. We have a whole bunch of different markets. It's a market. You can go in and get different different types of food and everything. I wouldn't say a grocery store. There's type vendors. Of thing, but you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can see that they're starting to that there's crowds are starting to get around the North Market. You can see it from the window of the uh, the hotel we're staying at. It looks like people might be getting a, a, you know in line to try to get some food, but the tensions are high and people are pushing each other around a little bit. Uh, it's it's getting to be about midnight. And, uh, it's, you know, for something that only happened a few hours ago, things are really starting to exp- uh, get a little bit explosive for them. Yeah, for we're the... all getting hangry. Freaking granola bars. Guys, I'm kind of getting worried. Like, shouldn't John and Emma be back by now? It's been quite a while. I, I hope they're okay. Where would we even start to look for them? They could be anywhere. I know, that's the trouble. I, I'm a little bit... Scared to go out there, and it looks like chaos down there. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried that they're not all right. So the streets are filled with cops, filled with people. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're detained somewhere. They couldn't get out of the building because no one was allowed out of the building. Maybe. Yeah, I, I suppose that's possible. How did John's phone get back here then? So in real life, I would be totally freaking out right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. would you be doing? I don't even... I'd probably be crying. And... <laughs> um, I'd be feeling very awkward because Emily's crying and I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'd be like, he lived a good life. He was the oldest anyway. <laughs> that doesn't help! Totally that doesn't help at all! So ruthless. I don't know what to say in awkward times like this. Sorry. <laughs> so you, you hear people out in the hallway and, and, and you hear a knock on the door. I would run to the door and throw it open. Okay. It looks like a guy that works at the hotel. He goes, is everybody okay? We're missing two people. We, we don't know where they are. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, you know, I hope they're not out in the streets. We've locked all the doors down the front, and we're, we're boarding things up right now. But you can't uh, you lock have, the doors. We're missing two people. We can't let people in. And and I'm sorry, but you have we're giving you the option. You can You can leave. Or you can stay here, but if you stay here, we're going. We're going to want you to stay in until the morning. Nobody else is allowed out tonight. I hope you understand. You're for sure gonna unlock in the morning. Uh, we're gonna see how everything is in the morning. We'll definitely let you out in the morning if you want to leave, but we're not letting anybody else in tonight. <sighs> this is uh, this is terrible. I think it would be stupid to go out. He walks. He he says. You agree? Or do you want to leave, or do you, or are you staying? Uh, can we, can we have a minute to think about it? Um, I'll, I'll come back. I got to go down. The, there's there's quite a few people I have to talk to. Okay. And uh, I'll be back. But but if you're gonna leave, go ahead and get your stuff together. And when I come back, I'll take you down. Okay. It's up to you guys. I mean, this is terrible. Uh, we can go look, but then we won't have a place to sleep. I know. What a friggin' crappy situation to be in. So as you're discussing this, you know, it, it's relatively quiet in your room. You hear people walking around down the hallways and you hear different things, but you hear this other rumble and the ground shakes, the windows shake, things fall off the shelf and everything goes quiet again. What was that? Is the TV still on? Yeah. Crap, was it like an earthquake? I'll uh, go and, like, run to the window, see if there's anything immediately out in the street. 
you see people running now that before they were sort of in groups and and going look like they're you know gathering their thoughts and what they want to do and trying to leave now people are running down the sidewalks that didn't really sound like a, a meteorite hitting that was different like aftershock or something that makes I, sense i don't know that doesn't that happen with aftershock isn't that from earthquakes what is aftershock I'm just saying things. Yeah, yeah, I but I mean, there was that. an earth shake when a thing hit the earth. I guess I don't know. It's an earth shake. That's weird. I feel the earth <laughs> move. Can Stop can you waiting. guys see anything at the window? What's going? On? Like, is there anything in the distance you can see? I'll come over and look out the window as well. What's being said on the TV? So uh, on the TV, um, you're hearing a lot more of the same. And you're seeing uh, things like um, animals are disappearing and places are, are, are being torn apart um, close to impact sites. Uh, nobody seems to know what the situation is. They just, uh, it's just not good. It seems like things have been leveled and, and like people are starting to disappear. Wait, disappear like no remains found? Right. Uh, okay, guys, this isn't good. This isn't good. That's what they're saying on the news. Now, there's also people on the news who are uh, radicals that are, are coming and, and are screaming up to the sky that, you know, God has come to take us take us away. Uh, and there are other people that are, are saying these are attacks from a foreign nation and that we need to prepare for war. So there's all kinds of, of craziness going on in the news and, you know, you have to sort of weed through what you believe and what you don't. Well, I think clearly, I mean, these came from outer space. They were, they were meteorites. All of this rubbish on the, like, that's, this isn't from a, another country. This isn't an act of terrorism. This is silly. I don't know why people are jumping to such conclusions. Okay, we're staying here, though, right? Oh, hey. my goodness. I... I say it's up so to you. many places the others could be where we would even start and, exactly, and at night with it being dark. I know. It's awful. My phone's only to... on 67%. I don't have enough flashlight for the whole night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, we've got I hate to say it, but I think that's the smartest here. thing for us to do. We could charge yeah, the it. the power's still on. I hope... Don't be irrational, Elena. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to go plug my phone hey, in. slap her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can we charge our phones? Yeah, I noticed my phone's at 64, so I'm going to go plug it in. Okay. So uh, a little while later, the guy comes back and says, have you made your decision? And yeah, I, Yes, I I'd like we're going the to steak stay. and eggs uh, with a glass of orange <laughs> juice first thing in the morning. <laughs> he, he sort of smiles and uh, uh, some levity in this situation is always <laughs> nice. But, uh, I'll tell you, and, and you see other people walking behind him with their suitcases, right? They're, other people have decided so they're, they're, they're going to leave. To leave. Right? And, uh, yeah, so he says, so I, I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I'm, I'm, if you want to get some ice or, or some, a pop or some things from the snack machine, uh, please do so um, now because when I leave, I'm going to lock your door. Um, until from the morning. outside? Uh, yeah, everybody that's in the hotel will be will be locked into their I, rooms. Why? Uh, yeah, you don't need to do that. Well, you you, you got to understand. There's there's a lot of people that aren't handling this very well, and and we don't want a situation where somebody might. Well, how do we um, get out if there's an emergency in here? Yeah, I feel uh, like you're not going to get out. If you want to get out, you need to get out now. Uh, like I said, I'm, this I'm so we're either leaving the hotel or we're locked in our room. This can't be legal. Yes. No. Uh. -uh. That seems a bit, a bit. Yeah beyond what's reasonable right? as you're talking down on the on the streets you hear gunfire the guy of course walks into your room and looks out at, at out the window too and you see uh, an officer shooting at somebody and you see one of the people that were leaving earlier with their with their suitcase uh, laying uh, dead on the on the street yeah i mean i don't want to leave but i don't want to be trapped either i guess i'll just what do you guys want from the machines i'll holy go, crap i'll go get snacks yeah, starving. Whatever let's, you can get here. Here's some change. Let's get some supplies. And he says, "We're staying I, here." I think. I think you see why we're doing what we're I doing. See I see why you're like keeping said, us I inside apologize. the hotel, but I don't know why you're locking the room. All right, still. boys, you got any cash that's not Canadian? Pretty sure toonies don't work in this thing. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll empty up my pockets and. and it's only only credit cards in the in the machines. I credit card. Oh yes, Frick. that is a roll of toonies in my pocket. I'm not <laughs> happy to see you. Emma goes missing, and you get a roll of toonies in your pocket. All right. <laughs> Um, I take credit well, cards, whoever's handing get, them. Let's get ready for the cuddle puddle tonight. Oh, gosh, the cuddle puddle. <laughs> no glom I thing. I mean, your visa is my visa, honey, so. I mean, that's true. Yeah, you know what I'm going to get. All right, let's go. Anyone else want to come? Yeah, let's load up on snacks for the night. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you, Elena. Okay. And I'll grab my card, too. Yeah, backpacks full of treats. Leland, I'm going to go with them as well, just, just in case. Don't let them lock the door while we're gone. I'll keep an eye out on, on the street, I guess. Don't let them lock the door. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you guys go down, and of course there's a lot of people at the snack machine sort of sucking up all the snacks, of course, and, and you know, kids are getting, you know, you know stuff, and, and when you get up there, there's only like a, a watermelon Sprite. I don't even know if that exists, but it sounds terrible. But that uh, that's what's left. They do have and watermelon Mountain Dew, which is actually watermelon pretty Watermelon Mountain Dew it's is all good. that's left. Oh, perfect, so, my uh, favorite. that worked out great for you. <laughs> what about food? Ugh. There's some there's some candy bars and some things left. It, it's not just been wiped clean. Okay. But, so you get a few things. He takes you back uh, in the room, locks the door, and says, "I'll I'll be back in the morning." What's uh, this guy's name? I ask him his name. Uh, his name is. I knew you were gonna do that because that's the shit I do. His name is uh, Mark Johnson. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, Mark. Mark says, uh, you know, hey, I apologize, but I think it's safest for everybody and. And he uh, he leaves, and the night goes on. Uh, you guys want to get some rest, or do you want to watch TV? What what do you think you would do? I think we would leave the TV on and probably stay awake watching it until we fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I might be able to doze a little. Yeah, Elena's probably playing Slay the Spire on her mobile. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I've got my phone plugged in. I'm playing Slay the Spire. Yeah. I'm playing Star Realms. I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey. As you're laying there, you're sort of half falling asleep. It's about four in the morning. Uh, Bill's already sort of fell asleep. He, he couldn't take it. He, he, he went to sleep. Emily's sort of still, for whatever reason, upset that I'm not there. And uh, is, is still sort of up over in the corner and... and trying to check her phone and, and see if there's any, any way that I was trying to get a hold of her. Um, and you see on the news, uh, Elena, as you're, as you're, that you see people being interviewed, and they say, they're massive, they're coming for us. And, you know, the, the reporter was saying, you know, uh, reports of massive-sized insects uh, near the, the crash sites, but there's no, confer- uh, no confirmation that this is true. And, you know, other people are, are being interviewed, uh, scientists and, and such, and they're saying, well, it's impossible. There's no, there's no way uh, creatures could be that size. This is all a hoax. People are taking advantage of this terrible situation to try to drive uh, chaos, and um, it should not be taken seriously in, in any circumstances. And soon after you see that, power goes out. Okay, I, I think I wouldn't wait. I would wake everyone back up. Guys, guys, guys! Uh, all the doors were electronically locked, so when the power went out, all the doors unlocked. Mm. Um, Bill. Bill? Yeah, what, wake up. what's going on? Wake up. The news said they didn't have video proof or anything, but they said there was ginormous insects. And then the power went out. I don't know. Enormous insects. That doesn't what? make any damn sense. How ginormous? Like, it I mean, sounds... an insect is tiny, so that could be ginormous. It's and all I my fingers up. What, like a, like a, like three inches? I like mean, a... I guess I don't know. And the news turned off. I, I, I have a feeling people are just breaking under the pressure of all of this. Why would they say that though? And... It doesn't make any sense. Also, the door's not locked anymore, guys. Well. I mean, how would there be you know, this? That's just, I don't get it. Well, they said, um, weren't animals missing? Maybe these insects are big enough to eat animals. That's huge. Yeah. Where did the Unless insects like come swarms. from? The meteor? I don't know. This is like something out of a, a sci-fi movie. This is bizarre. I, I don't, I don't think we need to spend any time 
any mental energy thinking about yeah, let's just that doesn't make any sense why don't we now that the doors are open let's just go take a peek outside see if it's safe okay so you think it's still about four in the morning it's still dark out but but eerily the the streets are silent you don't Let's wait for the sun to come up, at least. No, I meant just peek outside of our uh, of our room, in the uh, hallway. Kind of don't want to leave the room because, I mean, what if John and Emma come back? This would be the first place they would look for us, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just I'm gonna Bill, go to the I room door the news. and look don't outside. Don't open the door. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just gonna look in the hallway. Uh, you're gonna open the door. I mean, it's open for anyone who wants to open it. True. Yeah, anyone can walk out. We can lock it from the inside. It's a hotel. Check it it's out. Check it out. Let's see. Locks. Let's see if our neighbors. Did our neighbors leave? Let's go see what they're doing. I mean, they're probably sleeping, I guess. But okay, that's yeah, creepy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look out the window while they're going Guys, out the door. I'm just gonna poke my head out the door. It, like if there's any danger out there, I'll slam the door and lock it. It's, it's not mm-hmm. that big of a deal. Okay, Bill. So you look out. You look out. They open the door and look down the hallway. And it's a pretty long hallway. You know, you see quite a few rooms down. Uh, before the hallway sort of veers off to another direction. And you see other people similar doing the same thing, right? They're they're opening their door, they're they're looking down the hallway, and then they'll shut their door back up. Um, but you don't see anybody walking around. And Emily, you said you looked out the window? Yeah. So there's a lot of cars um, out, as you saw earlier, they were trying to get out of town, but obviously there was there's somewhat gridlock, right? And... Um, so the, you see uh, flashing lights, the emergency vehicles, the, the body that you saw earlier is gone, um, and you see a lot more police officers and people in, uh, in uniforms seem to have sort of taken over in, in the streets, I guess you could say, and, and sort of given some semblance of order. They seem to be moving the cars over to the side, off onto the sidewalk, so emergency vehicles can get through, and you don't see like people shouting and, and breaking windows or anything like that. that's happening earlier tonight. Do I see John? I'm going to look for John out the window. No. no. I mean, the, the, there's it's still chaos, right? But uh, as far as debris all over the place and all that, and there are people walking around, but you don't see, see me. Well, guys, there's, I mean, there's not much happening out. There's the odd person who's also kind of just opening their door and looking out in the hallway, but Nothing much to speak of going on out there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lock the door and we'll just hang tight here for a little while. Yeah, the, everything's still, of course, the power's off, so it's just the backup lights that are that are illuminating the hallway, and obviously the elevators won't work or anything like that. Is there anything in the mini fridge that's gonna go bad? Yeah, there's very expensive stuff in the mini fridge, but you're you're welcome to take it. The power is gonna be out, so I mean, can't let it go to waste. There you go. Anyone else want a cold drink while we got one? Yeah, give me one. Yeah, I, I think I might take one as well. Okay, the morning comes. Uh, the sun comes up and, and, you know, everything seems to be relatively calm. The lights are still out. Uh, peep, the Mark Mark Johnson is um, walks up and is, is asking people if they'd like to, to stay. They said, that we need to keep people off the streets, but, you know... You're welcome to stay. We'll 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 work it all out later on after all this chaos is through. I uh, I don't know, guys. I think yeah, why don't we do. keep our room so it's available for us if we want it. Well, the National Guards is here and they're asking uh, hotels to take people in. If there's any room for anybody else that can stay in the different rooms, that's fine. If anybody wants to leave, you know that's your prerogative. I can't have you you know stay but we we are gonna open up rooms for other people that uh don't have a place to stay until but you wouldn't put them in our room where our stuff is right well what we're asking is if 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 we could add additional people into your room here uh if if possible people need a place to stay we're gonna find out what people will be staying in the lobby and and things like that first i'd I'd be happy to have extra people but but we're expecting two more and yeah two more return we're gonna be full all right that, that's fine. I, Sorry, I you, you put six of us in a room with one pull of bed. I don't know what you're what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
we weren't really actually supposed to have this many people in here. Exactly, I was thinking it's going to be maximum of four. We paid for two people in this room, and we have six in here. You, you hear him under his breath, cheap bastards. Sounds like a out. convention to me. <laughs> So, do uh, we, I mean, so are we just staying here waiting for the National Guard? I mean, that's their best bet, right? Like, they probably collected Emma and John already. If they're, if they're getting people. And they're rounding yeah, people. I guess. I just didn't need them. I don't know. Oh, shut up, Elena. Those, that insect is a joke. That there's no way. You guys way. didn't hear these people. They were not. They were scientists. They were not just making this up. Trust me. I, I'll believe it when I see it. That's not a thing. It that's was ridiculous. 4 a.m., I guess, and I had some whiskey. But still, it seemed really real, okay? Well, then we'll stop somewhere and get some bug spray. Get some DEET. Get a little off. All right, we'll the be deep fine. forest kind? I ain't getting right. Deep right. off. Forest. The deep forest DEET, yeah. The deep I forest just, DEET. I don't know why. It kind of worries me that John and Emma haven't tried to contact us. Well, I mean, John's phone's here yeah, with me. Phone. Yeah, Maybe how Emma's would lost they? Hers. Does, or it's dead. Yeah, it could I, be dead. I probably would have checked earlier, but the hotel phone, I'm guessing, like, the landline, it's out. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, it, everything seems to be not working. And, uh, so if you look out the window again over at the North Market, you see that, like, a, there's, there's tents been put up out in the big parking lot in front, and it, it seems like they are trying to get something organized where they can feed people. There's a lot of people in the city that, that you know, maybe came in for the convention, uh, that would normally have went home uh, in the evenings, but now, of course, they have no place to stay. They, they didn't have hotels and things down here, and they're all sort of trapped in the city. They can't leave. So they're trying to, to get some, you know, organization together to be able to help feed everybody and, and try to take control. You can see things are starting to get back into some kind of order. And we thought 2020 sucked. And you're getting hungry, too. I'm always hungry. Tell me about it. Well, you're still half drunk from all the mini bar stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you're you're still staggering around. <laughs> Makes me hungry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if there's people lining up for food, we should get some food, right? What do you think John and Emma would do if they were in our shoes? Like, well, they're would probably they stay? not together. Well, let's leave a note here and go get food so that they know where we are and to to not leave, and we'll bring some food back for them if we can. Yeah, I like that idea. We. We're going to be getting pretty hungry if we wait much longer. And who knows how much food there's going to be. Or like, it might get all picked over. We should probably try and grab some while it's still available. Okay, I'll write a note real quick. <sighs> okay. What are you going to say on the note? Stay here. We'll be right back. We went to get food. We are coming back here. Stay. <laughs> Good boy. <Y> Exclamation <laughs> point. Five of them. And then love Emily. Glad you're alive. Love, Emily. <laughs> Where are you going? To the North Market. So you go down and you've seen uh, where they've had, you know, things pushed up against the, the doors and everything in the hotel, but they're now open. And you see, uh, you know, some officers standing out in, in front of the, uh, the hotel and a number of hotel uh, employees that are they're talking back and forth. People sort of wandering around, you know, in shock, really. Um, some are, some have their bags and it look like they're leaving. And others that are sort of all sitting around in the, the lobby and, and talking about what's going on. And, uh, and a few people over the table playing a game, you know, just trying to pass the time and, and not, you know, because they don't want to process what, what's happening. But it's, you know, things are starting to get a little calm. Uh, the kitchens are opened up down there. They're they're serving, you know, orange juice and things like that, trying to keep everybody uh, keep everybody going. So, you head over to the North Market and you see that people are talking, and some of them seem to be looking at their phones and uh, discussing what's going on. I'd like to walk up to one of the officers and hand out some incredible party buttons. Yeah, <laughs> we've got some stickers and plenty. some buttons. <laughs> Hey, you into RPGs? <laughs> what are you need an es need yeah. escape from this hellhole? <laughs> Come check out a spar. It's not much better. <laughs> so if there's any around, I'd like to walk up and and talk to him. Yeah, there's there's officers. Okay. Stand around. So I'll walk up to the closest officer and ask them. Um, hey, have you heard anything? I've 
my wife was mentioning that she heard on the TV something about massive insects. Is that that seems crazy to me? Yeah. Did you hear that? I, I that's that's what we've been, you know, we were told. But that seems ridiculous. I mean, I don't understand you hear some of the craziest crap when this stuff goes down. I'm, I've never seen anything like this before, but wow. Well, yeah. that's what I was thinking too. It, how would there be massive insects? Do you know anything about what's going on in any other cities around the country? Like, what's happening elsewhere? Well, I mean, what well, everything's like uh, chaos on the on the radio, and you know, you, you hear his radio just just you know constantly, you know, hear uh, calls and and the emergency vehicles are being out, and and he's like, yeah. I, Apparently we got hit by a, a, a bunch of meteors and everything's everywhere all over the country is screwed up. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the hell we're gonna do. Have they closed international borders yet? Uh, you know, the, I, no, I haven't heard that, but I, it's probably coming soon. Hmm. And then, uh, you know, the other officer comes over and, and he sort of waves him over and he says, uh, "Sorry, just a minute," and he, he goes over to talk to him. And you, you sort of watch them talking to each other and shaking their heads. And Okay. I don't know. Bill, should we, like, should we be, like, volunteering to help the injured people? Like, there's probably a medical tent somewhere we could be volunteering in. Well, I'm kind of on vacation right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you in real life. That was I'm good. trying to play me. Role play choice. 